Welcome to the Teacher Talk Show with Dr. Lisa Moses. This show is about challenges in the classroom, education, and policy. Express your concern. Call into the show at 704-873-1400. It is not necessary to identify any school district or give names. These conversations are informative and sincere. Now for your host, Dr. Lisa Moser. Welcome, welcome to Teacher Talk. I'm Lisa Moser here with Nikea on a Tuesday. Teachers are superheroes. Please, please remember to thank uh, our teachers for their amazing, amazing, amazing service each and every day. It's Tuesday and tonight at 7 p.m., time for our teacher peer support group. And tonight we have a lead teacher. She is a special education teacher, and she's going to lead us on emotional self-care. So you don't want to miss that. And for more information, please log on to my site, lisamoser.com. Now, last night on the Monday Teacher Talk show, uh, I touched on briefly about how we appreciate athletes. And that appreciation needs to also be shown for teachers. We don't make the money, but hey, we're doing the job. We are doing the job. Now, think about that, how we appreciate someone that can drive a machine around and around in a circle really fast, or how we can appreciate an athlete that can take a big ball and dunk it into a basket. We show that we appreciate them. We need to show that every day, uh, the service that our teachers do provide. Uh, Let me ask you this. Can you name uh, the top 10 math teachers in your community? Can you name the top 10 science teachers? Uh, Can you name uh, Teacher of the Year, the National Teacher of the Year? Name the State Teacher of the Year, any state. Uh, We need to show teachers that we appreciate them. In many instances, uh, we are the most caring, most nurturing, most inspiring people for our young people outside their family. In many instances, it's the job of the teacher. Last night, we also touched on culturally responsibility for school leadership. And I'm going to follow up our conversation from last night today with our very special guest, Ron Walker. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thank you for having me. It's good to see that you've got a new book. We want to talk to you about your recent book. But before we get into that, I always ask, tell us where you went to school. Tell us about your expertise. That's always the first question on Teacher Talk. So tell us about you, Ron. I was basically raised in Clayton County, Um, came out of Lovejoy High School, um, ended up going to Georgia State University. I was on that long track, though. Um, I don't think I was ready for college when I really started it. So I ended up finishing with Arizona State University, and I actually just completed my master's at Beulah Heights University. And your book is out. It's called uh, Black in America. Talks a lot about culture and our community. I want to touch on that. But let me tell you about some of my pet peeves uh, because y- you're much younger than I am. You- you've gone to school in a different environment uh, than when I went to school, Ron. And I'm not bothered by that by any means. But one of the things that is a pet peeve for me is this vast acceptance of vulgar and explicit nature of popular music by uh, a lot of young people who are mimicking uh, these entertainers today. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's all entertainers. I'm not saying that it's every young person. But I, but I am saying that it's very common to see a young person uh, saying the words of a uh, very popular song. Hopefully it's not the, the new one. Uh, what is it? W.A.P. I don't think that that's okay. And yet, when you see, uh, my director, that's her laughing at me. But when you see a young person and uh, they are mimicking uh, this type of culture, I try to remind them, like, well, when these mega stars get, uh, when they have obtained their wealth, when they have really made it into that rim of success, 
uh, you don't see them using certain language anymore. Uh, they're dressing a different way. You know, the trousers aren't down below their hips. Once they have created that wealth and they're sending their kids uh, to private school. But there's something about some of the kids in my neighborhood that they don't seem to understand that it's all a big play on and uh, they're living it as a reality and it's to their detriment. And they don't seem to understand that uh, their academia really is a, a very valuable tool and, and not so much uh, trying to play out uh, the, late, the latest song or the latest hit uh, music um, phenomena. So, so, Ron, give me your take on what's going on with uh, our culture and music. Can you do that for me? Um, quite frankly, music is one of those places where controversy has always existed. I think every generation has their genres of music and their particular songs that are not truly accepted by um, different generations. Um, if you look back, I remember I was just telling my wife the other day when I was a little boy and I got exposed to a song. I don't know if I can even say what the song is called. I don't think it's vulgar, so I guess I'll say it. Um, it was called My ding a ling a ling My ding a ling a ling It's a really old song, <laughs> okay. and it was from a completely different generation. But when you listen to the song, mm -hmm. you're kind of wowed by what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a teenager, there were different songs. And when you listen to them now as adults, you realize that the context is completely different. And it's actually quite vulgar. I think things have become more in your face now with uh, the culture that we live in. It's more accepting of things, as you stated. But it's more in your face. We even have a president who has become more in your face with certain things. So it's okay certain actions. I don't Not to say hear, that it's all right, but it had okayed certain things. I don't hear. And it's kind of trickled over. Okay, I'm following you. I, I'm listening. But I don't, I don't necessarily see the same sort of vulgarity and the explicit nature outside my community in other genres of music. I, I, am I off track here to say that? It definitely exists. Um, I try to listen to different types of music, but when you listen to like punk rock, mm -hmm. um, you have to listen to something that kind of correlates with what we're discussing. If you're discussing hip hop, then you can't necessarily look at contemporary Christian and make that comparison because contemporary Christian would compare more to gospel. So if you look at a genre of music that compares closer, there are a lot more vulgarities in rock and roll and uh, punk rock and things of that nature, even some country songs. Mm -hmm. You can find a lot of things that are kind of profane or vulgar. And I think it's just signs of the generations. What one accepts, another will embrace. And I've mentioned this on the few occasions that I have had the, the privilege of having company with, uh, with stars or entertainers. And one of the things I noticed as a common note, is they will say, well, it's the parents' responsibility to make sure that they understand that this is entertainment, that this is not necessarily reality. And my thing is, is that, well, you know, the average young parent is working double duty on one job or working two jobs, and they don't have the luxury to, or the time uh, to complain to the music industry that, hey, this may not be a good influence on our students. But let me go on to my next point, and that is the value of education. And I want uh, any caller uh, to call in and make a comment. If you have a question, uh, please do that now. The number is 704-873-1400. I'm going to take a call just momentarily. Thank you for holding. But let me talk about grades, because one thing I also noticed, uh, young people are quick to say, oh, well, uh, my son, my daughter, they're getting straight A's. They're getting straight A's. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, A's at this school is not the same as A's at this school over here. And we really can't say that A's or grades are a reflection of education. And I say that because so many times when uh, young people who've gotten straight A's uh, get into the university campus and they've got to get some extra help. So, so something's not quite right. When we talk about uh, what is education and what is uh, what are grades, they are definitely uh, not the same thing. 
And do we have the same value as of education? Are, are we, as I said, you're from a different generation than myself, so I'm asking you, you've written a book on culture. Uh, is education valued? I don't think it's valued the way it should be. I think I'm a little different because my mom was a teacher. My wife is on track to become a teacher. So education is a little bit different in my household. I'm also of the belief that school is only part of education. I believe that the most education your children should get should be from you. So my children, when they come home from school, a lot of times they still have to write a report for me. They still have to study um, certain pieces of history that I may not agree with mm -hmm. with the public school. There's a lot of things I don't necessarily agree with How um, about, with public school curriculums. Mm -hmm. How, so I just teach it different. That's wonderful to hear because I think at times that public school should be the supplement of your academia and that most uh, teaching should be done at home. Uh, let me ask you about this thing with grades because uh, in, here at the station we've had some conversations lately about not being able to assign a student less than a grade of 50. And that's not just in North Carolina, but many schools across the country have a policy where if a student hasn't turned in their assignment, uh, the, the lowest grade you can give that student is a 50. Now, what do you give a student who did some work and deserves and earned a 50? So uh, there's some controversy there. Again, we're talking about grades, talking about the value of education. How do you feel about that, Ron? That's interesting. I was a straight A student. Um, for most of my curriculum or for most of high school and um, grade school, even in college, I did very well. My children are on the same track. And I do believe that we have to have some type of system in place to reward those that are doing what they're supposed to do and let those that are not doing what they're supposed to do know that they need to step up. I believe at certain ages, it may hurt more to see certain grades. Like if you're in elementary school, and you get a 10, I mean, that could really damage some self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But if you're a high schooler, you should know better. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let me see if I have a call online holding to make a comment. Caller, are you there? Caller, I thought I had a call. I'm not sure. If not, that's okay, or they can call back. The number is 704-873-1400. Our topic today is the uh, culture of uh, school and education, the value. My guest is Ron Walker. He's written a book. Uh, Ron, let's talk about your book a little bit. Tell us your inspiration. Uh, the name of the book is uh, Black in America, I believe. Is that correct? I have it posted that's up on correct. my website. So tell us mm -hmm. what inspired you uh, to write the book and what the book is about. And we have a call now. Okay, hold on, Ron. <laughs> I'd like to get okay. a listener in when I can get a listener in. Let's, let's go to our listener. Caller, you're there? I'm here. Hey, it's Representative Jeff McNeely. How are you? <laughs> Jeff McNeely, thank you for calling in. And you have a comment on education and culture today, sir? Well, I'm just listening to what you were talking about earlier, uh, how important these opportunity scholarships are that allow children who otherwise can't afford maybe the, the private schools or, or getting them into the schools they need to be in that will help them the most. And right now, in this new budget, uh, Governor Cooper has uh, asked that we do provide opportunity scholarships. And to me, these are the people that are the most needy that, that need to get to the best schools they can to have the best chance uh, of success, mm -hmm. the, the best outcome. So I, I think now is not the time to cut these opportunity scholarships out for these basically minority uh, children who want to succeed. And we want them to succeed. Well, we do, too. Now, Jeff, uh, that was a great comment. I appreciate your input. But let me ask you this question. Uh, I'm going to ask Ron to hold on just a moment. He's our guest today, and we do want to talk about his new book. But, Ron, the need in the community, you know, I was born in Statesville, North Carolina. Iredell County is home to much of my family. Let me ask you this. How is it 
that the economic uh, situation in Ardell has been so static. Jeff, you want to comment on yeah. that? Uh, as far as you saying static, you mean as far as just the status quo? Then, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, we have Explain a high a we have a high need. We have uh, Title One schools. We have schools that are uh, in uh, dire need of resources. And I'm just asking, your state representative, you know about the budget. Yep. How is it that uh, this community? Uh, that we call home to, to Iredale has such a high need? Well, one of the things you got to understand is inside the state of North Carolina, there is a tier system. Uh, tier one would be your poorest counties. Tier two is supposedly your average. And tier three is your upper economic county. And believe it or not, Iredale County is a tier three. And a lot of it has to do with the south end of the county bringing us up, because to me, in the statesville part, in the idle statesville part of it, uh, where most of the schools are outside of Mooresville Grade School District, uh, we're not that affluent. Uh, we, we are still very uh, 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 blue-collar, and so we do not get a lot of the funding and the benefits that some of the other counties around us do, which has made it hard, and We've tried to maintain a good tax rate so we can attract more business. But also know this, that it, it, it sometimes is a double-edged sword. Uh, we don't spend the money necessarily on, uh, on our uh, uh, maybe schools that we should or as much, but we spend all that we can afford to spend within the tier system that we have. So that's kind of that tier system is very antiquated in my opinion. Uh, uh, I, I wish to hope to do something about it to do away with it uh, here in the state of North Carolina. Uh, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a tragedy. It should be more about zip code, not about county line. You are so correct so, on that, Jeff, and we appreciate you calling in and you explain that so well. Thank you so much for calling in uh, today, Jeff. We appreciate you and, and your work, and we continue and wish you much success uh, this year. It's a, it's a heck of a campaign, Jeff. Thank you again for calling. Well, let me, uh, you're very welcome. Anytime I can help, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me go back to uh, my guest. His name is Ron Walker. Uh, his new book is out. Uh, Amer uh, black in America. Let's talk about your book, Ron. Okay. Um, basically, I told someone the other day, I said, you have to bear with me because it's like I just woke up. So with everything that's going on in society, it feels like I just woke up to a lot of the issues. For much of my life, I've been really focused on business. I've been in business since I was very young. Started my first business probably in elementary school, still selling um, school supplies to my classmates, but I developed and I've done a lot of things over the years. But as a minister, I've been in ministry for like 15, 16 years. Mm -hmm. But and you've I've been a black been man all your community. life. Well, you've been a black person, a black boy, a black youngster, and now a black man. You've been a black man or a black person all your life. Absolutely. And I feel like I really just woke up. So with me being as in tune as I have been with business, with ministry, with the community, I knew there was a lot of other people that were probably feeling just like me or even in a worse situation. So I felt like it was important for me to give back in some way to say these are the things that have been happening in our, in our society. Mm -hmm. These are the things that are happening in our society. And in order to change them, we have to do something about them. So, so black you're in America saying is that, all about dealing with the past, present, and future. So you're saying that you were educated, you you have a degree, you, you know, you had that uh, undergrad campus experience, but now, uh, you know, in your professional life, uh, you've woke up. Is that what you're telling me? Explain that. I believe further. so, for the most part. Okay, when did you know um, you had I woke think up? I think I was, what was that? When, when did you know that you had, you know, had this awoke experience when did you know honestly i feel like it was just recently um just watching how things have been going it forced me to kind of look back and say not as much has changed as probably should have by now 
So I can look back at, uh, you know, we can look back at Emmett Till and see that the exact same stuff is still happening now. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have to look look back back that far. We don't have to look back that far. Now, my mother, uh, who's 86 years old, uh, you know, she and I were talking about her experience as a young person, probably just a little bit younger uh, than yourself uh, here in Statesville, Mm -hmm. North Carolina, uh, a group of. 